In 2020, a global pandemic struck. Some said taking care of the climate was a luxury we could no longer afford. Many leaders did not agree. There was a strong movement to rekindle the Canadian economy by building back better. We need to seize this moment to be creative about how we reposition the national economy. Resilience is so critical and I think it takes on even broader meaning when you have a pandemic. With regards to COVID-19, we can have that same level of mobilization to tackle these very important climate change issues as well. Instead of dismissing climate change, these leaders decided to embrace the opportunities by trying something different. As a result, millions of people found work in the green economy. In the first year alone, over 350,000 jobs were created, setting Canada on the path to becoming one of the most prosperous countries on the planet. None of this could have happened without the courage of the government and creativity of businesses who seized the day. Companies flying the maple leaf have proven that a new economic formula can power prosperity while protecting the planet. It started when our largest investors, led by pension funds and real estate, redirected their capital to power a green renovation wave. It made our homes and workplaces more comfortable and cheaper to run, built out the electricity transmission and charging networks needed to electrify the economy, all the while earning attractive returns for Canadian pensioners. We reimagined our resource industry to become the global suppliers of choice for lightweight carbon fibers, clean hydrogen, low carbon economy materials and renewable jet fuels. Our rich mineral deposits and petrochemical industry produced billions of batteries to become the leading manufacturer of state-of-the-art zero emission trucks and buses. Using low carbon methods free of expensive inputs, farmers and food suppliers blend the best tradition of our ancestors with modern technology to nourish people and the planet. Millions of hectares of green forests were planted and protected in partnership with indigenous forest guardians, creating a new set of lungs and fresh air for the planet. The Maple Leaf economic model is now taught in schools around the world. And all it took was investing a little less than 1% of our GDP, working with provinces and municipalities to keep the momentum going. To those who made it possible, Today, the future market is predicted at 212 billion by 2030 for carbon fibers. And the bitumen we find in Canada is absolutely perfect raw material from which to take those carbon fibers. In Alberta alone, uh, $84 billion of new markets that are clean. I recently built a 150 megawatt wind farm for three Mi'kmaq communities in the Gas Bay Coast. And our partner told us that it was the best project that they had because it was done in collaboration with the Indigenous communities and it gave them the best project. For investment houses, it becomes that box to check. Portfolio manager looks down the table and says, what are we doing about climate change? Oh, we're, we're writing off Canadian oil. We're no longer investing in Canadian oil. We're seeing that happen. Net zero is not just a plan for our environment. It is a plan for our economic competitiveness. Look at where we do make electrified vehicles and alternative propulsion systems in the country in the heavy duty sector. In Novabus, in New Flyer, in Bombardier Transport, in Siemens, in ABB, in Hydrogenics, in Ballard, in Ecamion. We're over 300,000 jobs. And a lot of those companies have year on year for the last five years been growing. So this is a growing landscape to invest in. Even with all the borrowing we're doing right now, there's no reason Canada couldn't devote another 1% of GDP each and every year for the next 10 years to combating climate change. We have the fiscal capacity.